everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome to another video. So today's video is going to be a research based video and yes that is why I'm wearing the glasses literally for no other reason so I hope you enjoy them. But today I'm going to be talking about something that I mentioned quite a lot and that is sugar. I absolutely love sugar. I genuinely have such a problem with it, but I also know that it's really not very good for my skin. So I actually started looking into this video for myself just because I'm the kind of person who needs to really understand something for it to kind of really hit home and be motivating for me to sort of change my own behavior. So that's why I looked into this video. I really wanted to understand the mechanism behind those kind of physical feelings and impacts that I feel when I do eat sugar. I found some really interesting things and I just wanted to share that with you. Um, I hope you find it interesting. If you do like these videos, then I highly suggest you hit that subscribe button. But if you don't wanna subscribe, please do hit the like button. That really, really helps me. So firstly, I wanna just really briefly touch on exactly what sugar is and what that means on kind of a more molecular level and how that is sort of processed in our bodies. Our bodies ingest two main types of sugar. There is also a third one, but I'm going to focus on the two main ones, which is glucose and fructose. So glucose is basically found in all carbohydrates and eventually most things are broken down into glucose because glucose is the main, main molecule that our cells run off for energy to perform normal functions and to just survive day to day. Then we also have fructose, which is a much simpler sugar. It is very sweet. It is found in fruits, hence why it's called fructose, and it is processed in a different way to glucose. So when we eat sugars, the sugars enter into our bloodstream, and most of the time it is mostly used by our cells in lots of different ways, but sometimes, we tend to eat a little bit too much. And when that happens, our body has lots of clever ways to kind of deal with that oversupply of sugar. So with glucose, if there is too much of it, it's firstly stored in the muscles or in the liver. And what it does there, it just kind of sits there and essentially what will happen is next time you exercise, some of that will be released and will be used as energy in those kind of very high bursts of energy demand. But there is also a limit to how much can be stored in your liver and in your muscles. And when we have too much even for that, that is when it gets stored as fat and we have some something called insulin, which essentially helps us to regulate and helps us to shuttle this glucose into the various places that it needs to, whether that's in the muscles, whether that's in the liver, or whether that is in our fat cells. Fructose, on the other hand, does not have the same mechanism as glucose, and it pretty much goes straight to the liver when there is too much of it in your body. When we think of sugar, when I mean the kind of white table sugar, that is essentially fructose and glucose put together in a molecule. Okay, so now that we kind of have an idea about what we mean when we talk about sugar, I'm gonna talk a little bit about exactly what the effects are of it on your skin. So what happens is when you get too much sugar in your blood, it undergoes something called glycation. So what is glycation? Glycation is essentially when all these free sugar molecules bind to various proteins and molecules and things inside your body. And some of these proteins include proteins that are in your skin. So as you probably have heard, a super important protein in your skin is something called collagen. And collagen is really, really important for keeping the kind of the structure and the bounciness of your skin. Over time, our collagen does break down and that is why we end up getting wrinkles and sort of looser skin. So what happens when sugar undergoes glycation, it produces something called advanced glycation end products or ages. When ages are produced, they can cause all sorts of disruptions and lots of different cellular functions. Accumulation of these ages can also lead to atherosclerosis, diabetes, end stage renal disease, and chronic pulmonary disorder. So a lot of different things basically. Now going back to the skin and going back to collagen, when glycation happens in collagen, it really has quite a few very undesirable effects. So the first thing that happens, it makes the collagen super, super stiff. And when it becomes super stiff, you can imagine it makes it much easier to break. The second thing it does is that collagen, normally when it is healthy collagen, is found in lots of sort of cross linkage patterns. And when it gets glycated, it impairs that function of cross linkage. So not only is it easy to break, they don't bind to each other. So finally what it does is slows down collagen turnover, meaning that it slows down production of new collagen. So if you are eating a very high sugar diet, eventually over time, your skin will start to wrinkle and it will get something called a sugar sag and it will essentially just lose its structure much, much, much faster than if you were eating a much lower sugar diet. Glycation can also affect something called elastin, which is the more stretchy fibers that are in between your collagen. And this is essentially what gives your skin that kind of movement. And same kind of thing,
thing in collagen, if you get lots of glycation in elastin, it impairs that kind of cellular function. So eventually it becomes quite brittle and easier to break. Now these advanced glycation end products, they can either form inside your body because you have too much sugar or they can actually enter your body preformed. So it's not just sugar that you wanna be looking out for because it turns out that these ages are also found in lots of different types of food depending on how it is cooked, especially with meat products, if they are burnt, grilled, barbecued, deep fried. So that is the different ways that you can ingest preformed ages. We've all kind of known that eating these very char grilled and barbecued meats are quite bad for you. And this is one of the reasons why. So what then happens is when we eat these types of foods, we ingest those preformed ages. It then goes into our bloodstream. The blood is then transported into our skin. And that is where these ages have that very negative impact on our skin proteins. So we've now talked about how sugar can impact the structure of skin, how it essentially can bring on premature aging. Now I want to talk a little bit about sugar and inflammation. So chronic inflammation is something I sometimes have to remind myself exactly what that means again. I do have a video on it, so I'll, I'll put a link of that up here. And essentially what that means is that when something foreign or something harmful enters your body, then your body will switch on those inflammatory responses in order to fight those things. But what happens is if those inflammatory responses are continuously switched on, then that means that eventually your healthy tissues will start to be attacked as well. Now sugar is one of those things that we know definitely causes chronic inflammation. It is something that is advised to be avoided if you have any kind of inflammatory disorders and that includes in the skin as well. So these are things like psoriasis, if you have rosacea, if you have acne, if you have dermatitis, all of those things will be affected and worsened by sugar. Now I did try and look up exactly what the mechanism as to why it causes inflammation in the skin specifically. They don't really know what the mechanism is, but there is one hypothesis that has something to do with the way it is broken down in the liver. That thing gets transported into your skin and there are inflammatory pathways within your skin that react really badly to that particular end product. It's a theory, it's not 100% confirmed, but what we do know is that if you feed animals and also humans high sugar diets, then these inflammatory skin problems do get worse or sometimes just appear from not having been there before. So they actually managed to induce dermatitis and very inflammatory skin symptoms in mice when they fed them on a very high fat, high sugar, essentially Western diet. So that's basically giving you an overview of why you should be avoiding sugar. Firstly, it'll make you old and wrinkly, and secondly, it will make you inflamed and itchy. But it's not all bad news. It doesn't mean that you need to cut out sugar altogether. There are things and ways that you can incorporate sugar into your diet that makes it a lot more manageable for your body. So first thing is first, sugar is sugar, no matter what form you find it in. And there is a lot of different names to it. So anything with the letters of O-S-E at the end of it is a type of sugar. And food companies are very clever because they call things different things in order to make it look like they haven't got lots of sugar in them, but actually, it's all sugar. So I'm gonna leave a list of some of the common names that you might see in the back of ingredients packets that actually are sugar. If it tastes sweet, it's probably got sugar in it is pretty much my rule of thumb. So the one very obvious thing is just, you know, don't have too much of it. Don't have that as like the main staple of your diet. Focus on things like slow release carbohydrates, fats, proteins. If you have these as the base of your diet, then you only have so much room for the, the, the more sugary things. And then it's absolutely fine. You don't really need to worry about it too much. The second thing you can do is that when you do eat sugars, is that have it with something that is going to slow down the release of it into the body. So eat it with a, a type of fat or, or some kind of proteins. As an example to this is, I always mention the fact that I love chocolate, but I actually prefer to eat a sort of a nut bar, which is dipped into chocolate because I know that the nuts will help the chocolate to be released much, much slower because nuts are quite difficult and quite hard to digest. So something that people always ask me about is the sugar in fruit. And sugar in fruit is better because when you find fruits in their very natural state, not processed, not made into a smoothie, anything like that, they are packed into loads and loads of fiber. But even myself personally, I find that if I eat too much fruit, it does tend to make my skin a little bit itchy. And too much fruit, yes, it does behave as lots of sugar in your body. So I would just have like normal amounts of sugar. Don't go on these very high fruit diets. I, I really don't think they're good. They're also not very satisfying. So <laughs> why would you do that anyway? Another thing that I just wanna mention as well that doesn't necessarily have to do with sugar, but it is to do with those preformed AGEs that I talked about earlier. You wanna be avoiding things that are barbecued, char grilled, roasted, deep fried, all those sorts of things that do create these preformed AGEs. You really 
want to be avoiding those and stick to more water-based methods in terms of your cooking. So steaming and boiling is going to be your best bet. So that's pretty much everything I know now about sugar and how it impacts your skin. Of course, sugar has lots of impacts all over your body. So it's not just to do with your skin. So it is really something we should be trying to minimize in our diets as much as possible, especially the kind of added sugars. Those are the ones you really, really want to be looking at for the most. So things that have any type of syrup, table sugar, um, those are the things that you really want to be avoiding as much as possible. Fruit sugars are better for you, but also again, maybe don't have mountains and mountains of it. And finally, also you want to be thinking about that certain carbohydrates, very refined carbohydrates are also treated like sugar in your body. So stick to the very slow release, whole, carbohydrates those are going to be your absolute best bet so i hope that that was interesting if you like this video please do give it a like please subscribe and i'll see you again on saturday for another video bye